Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is part of the Spring Boot Fundamentals series. In this video, we build upon the Greeting Web Services project, adding support for the popular Gradle build system. For those viewers who are unfamiliar with Gradle, let's briefly introduce it. Gradle is a powerful build system with features similar to Maven, though the architecture is quite different. Gradle is a modular and extensible framework whose core system is extended via plugins. The behavior of both the core and plugins may be extended or modified in the project build script. Gradle supports both single and multi-module projects. In multi-module projects, the build script for each sub-module inherits the behaviors of the parent, requiring little additional configuration. Gradle has a rich dependency management solution, natively supporting popular remote repositories as well as custom internal repositories. Gradle build scripts are authored in Groovy, making them intuitive to Java software engineers. This episode assumes that you have Gradle installed on your computer. If you need to install Gradle, go to docs.gradle.org. Select User Guide from the top toolbar. The Gradle User Guide has a chapter documenting how to install Gradle on most popular operating systems. Let's get started. I have opened the Greeting Web Services project in the Spring Tool Suite. Gradle build scripts are authored in a file named build.gradle. In the project home directory, create a new file named build.gradle. A minimal build script consists of plugins, repositories, and dependencies. Gradle plugins are bundles of functionality which shape the build behavior. Plugins exist for many popular programming languages and tools. Refer to the Gradle user guide for documentation of the many commonly used plugins. The Greeting Web Services project is authored in Java. To inform Gradle that we wish to perform Java builds, add the line apply plugin colon Java. The apply plugin syntax instructs Gradle to include the functionality of the named plugin into the project build. Next add the line apply plugin Eclipse. This adds support for Eclipse based development environments like the Spring Tool Suite. The Spring Boot Gradle plugin provides the functionality to build executable jar files and run projects directly from the source. The plugin also facilitates dependency management, allowing projects to omit the version number for Spring Boot dependencies. To utilize the Spring Boot Gradle plugin, it must first be declared as a build script dependency. At the top of the build.gradle file, add the build script script block. In Groovy syntax, a closure is an anonymous block of functionality. In a Gradle script, the build script script block closure is used to configure the class path for the build script itself rather than the source project. In this case, we're declaring a dependency on the Spring Boot Gradle plugin, and we tell Gradle to retrieve that dependency from the JCenter repository. We will discuss dependency management in greater detail later. Next, add the line apply plugin colon spring boot to incorporate the spring boot gradle plugin into our project. Project properties provide the ability to dynamically alter the behavior of gradle scripts. Let's illustrate how to set a few property values. Every gradle project has a version property. By default, the value of this property is unspecified. Set the project version to 1.0.0 snapshot. The Java plugin adds several project properties to the build as well. The source compatibility property tells Gradle which version of Java to use when compiling the source. Set the source compatibility to 1.8. The companion property named target compatibility tells Gradle which version of Java to use when generating the compiled class files. By default, the value of target compatibility is the same as source compatibility, so we can omit it from the build script. A typical project relies upon external dependencies. 
These dependencies are retrieved from repositories. Use the repository script block to configure which to use for a project. Let's use the JCenter repository. If you wish to use the Maven Central repository, simply replace JCenter with Maven Central. The project dependencies are declared within a script block named Dependencies. Individual dependencies are grouped into dependency configurations named Compile, Runtime, Test Compile, and Test Runtime. The Compile configuration specifies the classes required to compile the production source. The Runtime configuration enumerates the dependencies required to execute the production source. By default, the compiled dependencies are included in the Runtime configuration. The Test Compile configuration specifies the classes required to compile the test source. By default, the compile dependencies are utilized to compile the test source. The test runtime configuration lists the dependencies required to run the test classes. By default, the test runtime class path includes the compile, runtime, and test compile classes. Notice that several of the dependency configurations do not specify a version property. This is because the Spring Boot Gradle plugin utilizes the Dependency Management plugin to automatically determine the correct version of dependencies managed by the Spring Boot Bill of Materials. Every project and task may contain user-defined properties for use in the script. These properties are called extra properties. Let's define a few extra properties to contain the version numbers for the dependencies whose version is not governed by the Spring Boot Bill of Materials. Create an ext block containing the user-defined properties. Each of these properties may be referenced by name throughout the script. Replace the version numbers in the dependencies script block with the property names. The Gradle wrapper installs the full functionality of Gradle into the project. This removes the need for build users and continuous integration systems to install Gradle. The Gradle wrapper is the preferred means to perform Gradle project builds. To install the wrapper in a project, simply execute the wrapper task. At, any ter at the terminal prompt in the project home directory, type Gradle wrapper and include a parameter with the Gradle version number. The wrapper task downloads and installs the Gradle binaries into the project subdirectory named Gradle. Platform independent execution scripts named Gradle W.BAT and Gradle W, which is a Linux compatible shell script, are installed in the project home directory. Every Gradle command which may be executed with the Gradle executable may also be issued using the Gradle W script. Let's run the application to see Gradle in action. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Gradle functionality is organized into discrete groups called tasks. At the command line, specify the tasks to run after the wrapper script. Let's illustrate this with a few core tasks. To compile the project without executing any unit tests or build reports, use the assemble task. The assemble task compiles all the production source and copies all production resources to the build subdirectory. It assembles them into the project binary artifact, which in our case is a jar file. To clean the project, Removing the build subdirectory, use the clean task.
Multiple tasks may be used in a single build. Notice we'll use clean and assemble here. A task named check compiles both production and test source, copies the production and test resources to the build subdirectory. It then executes all unit tests and produces all of the build reports. The Gradle task named Build combines the Assemble and Check tasks. Therefore, it runs all unit tests and produces build reports, and at the same time it produces all build artifacts, in our case, the JAR file. The Spring Boot Gradle plugin includes a task named Boot Run. The Boot Run task performs the Assemble task and starts the Spring Boot application using the embedded web server. The Boot Run task is meant for local development only. Press Ctrl C to stop the Spring Boot server. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the Lean Stacks YouTube channel and follow the Lean Stacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on LeanStacks.com. To view the complete repository illustrated in this video, see the GitHub repository URL in this video's description.